Mundo's going to set up set her up. guitar and get ready, and, and we're, we're going to have gonna a little say hi banter to about uh, Mundelein University, <laughs> <laughs> Mundelein College, Whatever a.k.a. a part of La Ola. And in the audience is my sister Terry, who also went to Mundelein, the way back there, yes. Well, Cal, I know um, we, didn't get to, we didn't get our fellow roommates up here, so it's just you and me, babe. And, uh, and there was our former prof. Who, when we walked into the room and to a oh, class, David called, Orr was uh, your teacher. No yeah. wonder you got such Movements a for Social Change was the <laughs> class I took in '69, and there was this young, cute professor, and we all uh, we all wound up, you know, marching in Washington together and stuff like that. Welcome. Thank you. And you became a great doctor. The, you are the greatest kind of doctor. The family doctor. She, she'll make a face. Um, <laughs> She went back up to the Mayo Clinic, got her MD, and you are now teacher of doctors. Um, and why was everyone in your surrounding cheering for joy at the Supreme Court decision a few weeks oh, ago? Yeah, so I am a family medicine doc. I'm privileged to be that. I actually, probably my roots do, do go to my Mundelein College experience. And by that I mean that um, it helped me become more political, more aware of community than I probably was growing up. And so when I decided I wanted to be a physician, I didn't really fully appreciate till I applied and did some work in the women's union. I worked in the Young Pates Clinic in Uptown um, that I knew that when I went to medical school, I thought, and I went for the reason that health care is a right, not a privilege. And actually, a lot of family docs, um, can't speak for all of them, but since I teach many young docs who have chosen family medicine, which is not, um, it's, believe me, it we have enough money to live on, I don't mean that, but it's not a lucrative kind of practice. Um, they do it because they know that health care is a right and that health care access is critical. So we were kind of holding our breath. One, I can also go into where I work, but we were holding our breath and just knew that um, having the um, Supreme Court overturn or um, can call the ACA Affordable Care Act um, not legal would be devastating to that effort to secure health care access for everyone. And so that's why we're very, very, very excited. Um, many family docs work in community health centers, which is what I do. It's a federal qualified community health center, which means that we do have good quote, safety net support for uninsured. So we also have different resources that we utilize in terms of advocacy and many things being right in our clinic because people can't go out of our clinic and get the other services they need because other clinics aren't doing that. Right. So um, the community clinics also are a model moving forward for access for people. And so it's, you know, we were excited all the way around and really for our communities and for our patients because, you know, basic health care is like necessary for people to, to live a quality life. You yeah. know, the, uh, the word out is that the insurance companies like the Affordable Care Health Care Act. Uh, I'm just curious to know if you were. Uh, give me a picture of what you think it is among doctors around the country. I mean, you hear all this thing about oh, doctors are against it; they got a right to make money. I meet plenty of doctors who are all are for it, and uh, I just wonder if you have a sense of uh, the national divide or, on this question. Yeah, I I don't. I mean, my sense from, we have, you know, in hospitals something we call the doctor's lounge, which is where doctors go and talk to each other and, like, have a cup of coffee and take a break and wait to do a surgery or whatever. In our hospital, um, when it was upheld, a lot of the doctors in the doctor's lounge were not happy. But it wasn't the primary care docs. We were all, you know, high-fiving and totally excited. But many of them saw it as um, an affront to their right freedom. to freedom to be successful fiscally. They charge a lot and, of money. <laughs> yes, charge a lot of money. And many of them will not even consider seeing someone without insurance without, like, 
$300 down the minute you walk in the door. Well, that is prohibitive, yeah. absolutely prohibitive. So yes, there is a divide. I, I think in terms of your question about insurance companies, yes. I mean, the Affordable Care Act is a very imperfect solution, and it's a cobbling together of a lot of um, uh, sort of living with all of the power that's that occurs within within healthcare as it's provided in the United States. I mean, many of us are not like thrilled about the Affordable Care Act. We would much rather have universal health care. Um, it's egregious how much insurance companies make on health care and how much of that money then is is shifted away from patient care and, and people's health. So I get that it's a complicated system and there was a lot of um, finagling over living with all the constituents of healthcare in this country to include pharmacy, to include insurance companies. Yeah, they're super powerful and their goal is to make, you know, get more from it in terms of people that they will now offer some product to and they will make some money from. No question. See, she's full of stuff. We have to have you more often in town. I, wanna, I just want to go one other direction with you um, because I want to mention the name of someone dear to us who's now passed, who was a pioneer in yeah. uh, community health care, yeah. and that was Jenny Knaus, yeah. um, who recently passed, died of Alzheimer's early onset. She also was a history professor at Mondelein College, a colleague of David's, and a woman who... That would who, be David Orr. Yes, and uh, she introduced us to the Chicago Women's Liberation Union and a lot of other activist um, notions and then she went on to run the urban preceptorship with uh, your doctor, um, uh, you Quentin know, Young. Quentin Young, yeah. Well, who, it was way back. He was my doc. He's right. my friend. Yes. Um, so, to me, I'm so grateful for our education, I, and I feel when we're all together around a table like we were last night, there's there's no distance between when we left Mundelein and last night at the Heartland Cafe because we, uh, we got formed there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't mean to talk all this Thanks much. for coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And we're going to see you again. <laughs> and there was yes. a question there Oh, there's somewhere. a question. Would you have it? No. I'm okay, well, she doesn't. I so I want to say one thing, yes. and I will say coming out of our era, which 68 to 72, um, I was unbelievably fortunate to go to Mundelein, a women's college, because I actually don't think I would have been able to do what I was able to do without that formative empowerment. So I was the only person in our graduating class to go to medical school, and they all thought it was crazy. But you know, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have even been that person without that support. So. Let me ask one Amen. more question. Uh, Do you think <laughs> that uh, people, the, the, the American people, will come to appreciate the Affordable Health Care Act the more they know about it and the more it impacts on their lives? Oh, definitely. I mean, people get it right out of the chute for two reasons. One, they get that care of that um, transitioning young generation right. to age 26 right. with their parents' help. As and, a father with kids growing up, I appreciate that one. Yeah, and secondly, people with... Um, pre-existing conditions who yeah. previously could get like no help or never change, never move, never change jobs. I mean, seriously, those two people will get immediately. And a bunch of stuff kicks in this August that affect women. And in fact, today, I think there's a discussion of the Affordable Care Act by uh, representatives of the Obama campaign yeah. to women who want to be able to uh, discuss it with uh, their fellows, their husbands, their friends to um, discourage them from voting against Obama. And so it's a, it's a partisan presentation, but it is also informative on this extremely complicated mm -hmm. piece of imperfect, as you say, legislation, but how, you know, every passing month means more of it is kicking in. And, uh, you know, it's, until they perfect it, um, those pieces are helpful. Anyway, thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm going to join you. you for breakfast in a second. Right, right. after.